Hi everyone and welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're going to be making yemista, which are basically stuffed uh, peppers and tomatoes. And let me show you what we need. I've already started uh, cooking my onions because they take a little while, so I want them to get nice and soft. In the meantime, let me add my garlic and then I'll take you uh, down the list of ingredients. So I have my onion and my garlic that's cooking. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's done, but let me show you what else we're going to need for this. So we need some onions and garlic, of course, some ground beef, a flat leaf parsley, a cup of basmati rice, and a teaspoon of sugar, for, not sugar, a teaspoon of salt for that, black pepper, canned tomatoes, any canned tomatoes, whole, whole chopped, diced, whatever, just plain, as long as they're unflavored, canned tomatoes. We need some seasonings, salt, crushed red pepper, dried dill, and oregano, potatoes, uh, some water, and then we need some bell peppers and some tomatoes, and I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I did this, because I'm gonna, pee, I'm gonna core a few in front of you. So let's get started. So the onions and the garlic are cooking until they're nice and soft and this adds a lot of moisture uh, to the sauce and it needs to be a really nice flavorful moist sauce. Uh, if you've been following my recipes, most of my recipes contain a similar ingredients. We have onion, garlic, tomatoes and then similar seasonings and spices. These are my favorite seasonings. They're very simple to put together and really create hundreds of dishes if you just uh, use these basic ingredients. They're really good and fresh tasting and super, super flavorful. So, uh, yemista is a really nice traditional classic uh, Greek dish that I grew up eating. I grew up eating it many different ways. This is just one way. We've made, we've made it with vegetarian fillings, with meat fillings, with shrimp. It can be made many, many different ways. This is one recipe. I'll definitely share more recipes with you in the future. Um, this is a big batch. If you're going through, that's my oven preheating. Make sure you preheat your oven to 400 degrees. So like I was saying, this is a big batch. And if you're going through the trouble, and it's not a lot of trouble, but it does take a little bit of time to prepare this. So might as well make a big batch, especially if you're having guests over, or if you have a big family like I do, it's perfect. It even makes enough for, left, enough for leftovers, which is a perfect lunch uh, for the next day, or you can do lunch and dinner in one day. So um, anyway, I'm cooking my onions and, I'm, and the garlic. They're almost ready. They're nice and translucent and getting slightly golden. And as soon as they're done cooking, we're just gonna add our ground uh, lean beef. I like to use mostly lean beef, uh, and I like to get my fat from olive oil and a lot of the moisture from onion and garlic, and I, it kind of stays more healthy that way. And this recipe only uses one pound of beef and makes so much. So this is another great example of how Greek cooking is really healthy and very economical, because just, Beef is pretty much the most expensive ingredient out of all of these ingredients. And all you need is a little bit, and it makes a whole lot. And it's really healthy. This is one of those really super healthy dishes, a great way to eat vegetables. So my onions are almost ready. While they're cooking, let me puree. Let me add my canned tomatoes to my mixer. I, like, if, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Going to the supermarket and looking for canned tomatoes drives me crazy. I don't know what you call it, ADD, ADHD, whatever. I can't concentrate. I go to that aisle, I look at the thousands, or it looks like millions of canned tomatoes. So many different brands, so many different kinds. So I don't really stress out about how they're packed. If they're whole, if they're diced, if they're crushed, it doesn't matter. Because I just puree them in my mixer and I make my life easy. I just go through the aisle, pick up um, you know, one that a good brand that I like. I try to buy organic. And, and as long as they're not flavored, because I like to add my own seasonings, I'm good with it. OK, I'll add those to my blender and keep them ready. OK, so my onions and my garlic are pretty much done. Let me show you what it looks like without burning my fingers. This pot is really hot. So they're nice and soft, 
they can get a little more golden like than this, that's fine, but this is good enough for me. So I want to make sure my heat is turned on to high. And I'm just going to add my beef to this. And I'm, I'm just going to break it up a little bit. So I'm just going to break it up and mix it and kind of brown it in my onions and my oil and my garlic. And that just takes a couple of minutes. It's really quick, really easy. Like that, that's good enough. I'm going to add my salt, crushed red pepper, my oregano and my dill. Put a little bit of crushed, freshly ground black pepper in here. That's good. And now I'm just going to puree my tomatoes and add some tomato puree to this as well. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to puree my tomatoes. And that takes a few seconds. That's it, that was really simple. It's done. And I'm gonna add about two cups to my sauce. To my meat, I should say, which is gonna be the filling, part of the filling. That looks like about two cups. A little more. Okay, so that's gonna cook. I'm going, to re I'm going to reduce the heat to medium high and I'm going to let this cook for about 20-25 minutes until the onion begins to melt, the meat is going to be completely cooked and the sauce is just going to reduce a bit and I'll show you what that looks like once it's done. In the meantime, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way and show you how I uh, get my potatoes, not my potatoes, my tomatoes and my bell peppers ready to be filled. So I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way and then I'll show you how to do it. All right, so I'm going to begin by cutting the tops off of my tomatoes. And you want to use a serrated knife. It's easier to cut through a tomato with a serrated knife. And cut it just enough that you, don't, you get just the top off. It's going to be, it's going to act like a cover. So we're going to use the pulp of this tomato in our sauce. So we're going to puree this. I'm just going to take it out with a spoon like this. I cut around the edges with my knife. I'm just going to make sure I get all the seeds out of there. And I'm going to put this on the side. I'll show you what it looks like after. And I'm going to make sure you save the lids, OK? Do it one more time. I'm going to cut the top off. Go around the pulp of my tomato with my knife. And you want to try not to cut the skin, okay? Because then your filling is going to ooze out of there. Just use your spoon to scoop out the inside of the tomato. And that's it. That's how you do the tomatoes. I've done the other ones. I'm going to pop this in my blender and puree that because I'm going to use some of the sauce to dress my potatoes later before I put them in with the rest of my potatoes. And that's it. That's done. I'll save this actually to save my compost from my peppers. Okay, so you do basically do the same thing with the peppers, but you don't reserve the insides of the peppers for um, the filling. You don't want seeds, pepper seeds especially, in your filling. So just take the pepper out. Try not to break the top the way I just did because you're going to need it. I'll try to save as much as I can from it. Just take out the insides, all of the seeds, and then kind of just rinse them out to get all the rest of the seeds. And let's ho hope that I don't kill this one completely also and ruin it. Okay, so you cut all around. And if you cut carefully enough, the seeds come out with the top. And you can just cut the top off, cut the seeds out, and put them in your compost or throw them in the trash. We compost everything in our house. We don't let anything go to waste. We have a nice garden going in the backyard and everything helps. Okay, so I'm just gonna rinse these out and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're just gonna prepare our potatoes because 
You need a couple of potatoes to kind of go inside this dish also. Uh, potatoes are yummy, so I'm just going to, the small ones I'll just cut in half like that, and the bigger ones I'll just cut in quarters. I've already peeled them. And I'm going to keep them ready. Like that. I'm going to put this in here. And we're just going to season them lightly. You want to make sure you season everything. When you're cooking, the key to making everything really delicious is make sure everything is properly seasoned. You don't need exotic spices, specialty spices that you have to special order and you're only going to use for one recipe. All you need is really good ingredients, fresh ingredients. Make sure everything is seasoned properly the way you like it. And that's it. Guaranteed your dish is going to be delicious. Okay, so I'm going to put a tiny bit of olive oil on these. Extra virgin olive oil. Of course. Let me dry my hands. Put a little bit of salt on these. Potatoes usually need lots of salt to be seasoned properly, but again, it's going to absorb a lot of the juices. It's going to be sitting in this pan with the vegetables, so it's going to get a lot of flavor. A little bit of oregano, some black pepper, and then a little bit of this tomato puree. Just a little bit, you don't need that much. Like two ladlefuls is fine. I'm gonna mix it all up. And we're gonna leave it on the side until we're ready to fill our tomatoes and our peppers and then it'll go right in between all of the nooks and crannies that are left in the pot. So my sauce is coming along really nice, our meat sauce. I'm just gonna chop my parsley and keep it ready because it's going to go in right in the very end after I've already, um, after I add my rice in there. And that's going to be in just a few minutes. And the herbs are what gives this a lot, a lot of flavor. So make sure the herbs that you're using are very fresh. In this case, the, what is this? This is parsley. <laughs> the parsley has to be very fresh. I prefer flat leaf parsley over the curly variety, but if the curly one is the only one they carry at your supermarket, that's fine. It'll work fine. Just don't substitute dry parsley for this. It doesn't do, definitely doesn't have even, not even half as much flavor as fresh parsley has. Okay, this is ready. We're going to check on our meat sauce and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so the meat sauce is definitely ready. It's reduced. Everything is nice and perfectly cooked. So I've rinsed my uh, cup of basmati rice out. I'm just going to add it in here with two cups of water. I'm going to turn the heat on high. I'm going to add my salt in here for the rice. Give it a nice stir. And you don't want to cook this for no long, you don't want to cook this for longer than eight minutes. Eight minutes max is all the rice needs to cook. It should, it should still be a little bit hard when you're done cooking this because it's going to finish off its cooking process in the oven once it's stuffed in the vegetables. So I'm going to cover this and cook it for just eight minutes exactly. Then I'll add my parsley and I'll show you how to fill it in the vegetables. Okay, so eight minutes have passed. I'm just going to give this a mix. Add in my parsley. Turn the heat off, of course. And then at this point, you want to give it a little taste and see if it needs any more seasoning. Uh, the seasoning should be perfect, but if it needs a little more, go ahead and add it before you start filling. It's good enough for me. So now we're going to fill our peppers and our tomatoes. 
All right, so before we do that, we have all this tomato puree left over. You're probably wondering what we're going to do with it. Well, if you have a jar, a glass jar, and you know you're going to be cooking with it within the next two to three days, go ahead, put it in a jar, and store it in your fridge. If you're not sure if you're going to be using it, and you definitely don't want this goodness to go to waste, just put it in a Ziploc bag, a freezer bag, zip it up, put the date on it, write down, you know, mark it, what it is, pop this in your freezer, and then you could do it, you could use this anytime in your next recipe, it'll work great. So we're not wasting any of it. We have it already pureed and ready to go for the next time we need it. Okay, now, before we begin, we're just going to sprinkle just a tiny bit of sugar, just a little bit. You're barely going to even, actually you're not going to know it's there. It's just going to cut the acidity in the tomatoes. You don't want to sprinkle it in any of the peppers. This is just for the tomatoes. And you could definitely leave it out if you're, you know, if you're not putting sugar, if you're avoiding sugar. But I just put a tiny bit in there because tomatoes tend to be acidic and the sugar is just a tiny bit, just a sprinkling, really cuts that acidity and makes it uh, way better. So our filling is all mixed up. It smells so good. I wish you could smell it. And now we're going to fill them, fill everything, our peppers, our tomatoes, three quarters of the way up because the rice is going to expand. And it's nice if you can get different color peppers. It looks really pretty. You can definitely use zucchini blossoms if it's summertime. And if you can find them in your local farmer's market or if you grow them, go ahead and use zucchini blossoms. Uh, all different kinds of bell peppers. The more color, the more appealing it is visually and the more you'll want to eat it. Now that they're all filled, we're going to put their covers on. And you can label these before you get started, so you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You definitely don't want to label them. It doesn't matter, really. <laughs> For those super perfectionists. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to label them. Just put any one on top as long as it looks like it covers it and it's not falling off or it's not sinking in. <laughs> you put, put these on like that and now you're gonna see that there are some spaces in between right that's what the potatoes are perfect for we're just gonna put these potatoes in to kind of fill in all of this space and make sure that it helps prop them up and go ahead use your clean hands this dish is really easy to make you guys so make sure you make it post some pictures of this I'd love to see your creations. I love to see how your dishes turn out. I love to hear feedback, so make sure. Um, a lot of you email me on Facebook. Go ahead, post your comments underneath this video. Um, it's easier for me to check. One, one, I do check Facebook every day as well, but um, I like to see comments down here. It's a new channel, and it's fun when I see activity on here. Okay, so we have all of this sauce left over. We're just going to pour it on top, you don't need any water added to this dish. I'm just going to rinse my hands, sprinkle a little bit of salt on top of this, and cover it with foil and pop it in the oven. Let me rinse my hands. All right, so I'm going to drizzle a tiny bit of my favorite olive oil, just a little bit. Sprinkle a little salt on top of this so the top has flavor as well as the inside some freshly cracked black pepper. I mean, this is just a feast for the eyes. It's a feast for the eyes and for the tummy. It's beautiful, it tastes so delicious. Where's my aluminum foil? Here it is. Okay, so my oven is preheating at 400 degrees. I'm gonna cover this really, really tightly. Try not to lose my foil. And I'm gonna let it cook for one and a half to two hours covered. Then I'm going to uncover it, and then I'm, I'll raise the temperature in my oven to say like 450, so the top can get a little bit charred, and I'm going to cook it at that temperature for about 15 minutes or until the tops of all the vegetables are, get a little bit of like a dark brown color, and that brings out their sweetness and makes them even more delicious. I'll put one more piece of foil in the middle. And that's it. They're going to go in the oven, and I'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out. See you later. 
Okay, welcome back. And I pulled the yamista out of the oven. Take a look at how nice they look. They've gotten slightly charred on the top. And you could even leave them in a little bit longer so they could get a little bit more charred. That charred uh, roasted uh, flavor just brings out the sweetness of the vegetables and makes it taste way, way better. There it is. So technically we should let this cool a little bit, at least 10, 15 minutes until everything is um, kind of at the right temperature to eat. But I'm going to take one out right now so I can show you what it looks like. And I'll take out this big yellow pepper. It's calling my name. <laughs> I'll take out some potatoes. And again, I haven't added any water to this while it was roasting because uh, the peppers and the tomatoes release their juices and it's just enough for everything to get cooked perfectly. This is it. I'm going to try not to bur burn my tongue while I eat this. Go on my website, www.demetrasdishes.com. Get this recipe and more, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.